th the third rainbow girl uh, the long life of a double murder in appalachia by emma um, Cop copley or copley eisenberg the, the blurb mentions in cold blood on it and i would back that up this is very similar the, the inciting incident is um, a murder that happens in west virginia there is this place called pocahontas county <laughs> You can't just, just you have to be like dashing up. Like, yes! <laughs> I see them there beyond those trees, right behind this waterfall. And in 1980, um, these two women were on their way to a festival. It was called the Rainbow Gathering. And then the next thing you know, they turn up dead in a field down a random road that like really only locals would know. And the crime was unsolved for 13 years. So really the book is way more about the fact that this town is just like traumatized by all of this. Mm. It was an open wound for so long. I imagine these violent crimes happening in mm -hmm. such a mm -hmm. small community. The day before, you know, you let your kids walk to the store by themselves. Mm -hmm. The day after, what do you do? You're like, yeah. someone murdered these people in cold blood. And then they're yeah. probably that, from our it, town or they were passing through Exactly. It. Mm -hmm. it's like, the, like, there's probably somebody in our town who's a killer. And much like in cold blood, it's as much a meditation on the people involved in the aftermath of a crime. It was a very um, somber read, but I enjoyed it. Julia, would you like to go next about this book that you're super excited about? Yes! It is called When We Were Vikings by Andrew David McDonald. Also, fun fact, but here's a picture of him. He's real cute. Oh, he is. Hey. Hey. And Canadian. Look at his little, oh. hey Andrew. <laughs> That's adorable. He is really cute. Um, he lives in southwestern Ontario. Mm. Um, unfortunate for all of us here, but... <laughs> This book is really fun. The reason I picked it up was because it's comp to things like um, Frederick Bachman, especially my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. So like that's kind of the viewpoint you're getting. Zelda, however, is not a child. She's an adult who has fetal alcohol syndrome. So she has a disability and so she's not a normally functioning adult, but she's very independent and highly functional. She lives with her brother, Gert. Their mom died early of cancer, and then they end up living with their uncle, who sort of made a pass at Zelda at one point, and also beat up Gert a lot. But to get out of that situation, Gert got into some sort of situation with a student named Tupan that is probably selling drugs, and it seems he loaned Gert some money so they could get on their own and then he comes to collect. Zelda, meanwhile, she is super obsessed with Vikings, and she just is always talking, like, kind of relating her life to a Viking legend. She always says people, which I want to start saying now to you, like, this is my legend. I will live <laughs> Wow. And she, like, makes a list of, like, all the things that are requisite parts of, like, a Viking legend, and she starts checking them off of what she has. It's, like, one is, like, um, a villain to fight, uh, a weapon to use, and a wise man, a fair maiden. Her wise man is her, is her therapist, Dr. Laird. And then there is something weird going down to can. Some drugs have been stolen. Uh -oh. A terrible plot against Zelda was hatched, and now she's got to take revenge on this villain. Oh, and then her a fair maiden. She has a boyfriend <laughs> in the beginning, and that's her fair maiden. Um, <laughs> I like her skewing of gender norms mm -hmm. and gender roles and how she discusses things. She's not trying to like, he's my, like, he's my fair maiden, but he's not a maiden. Like, right. like he just, he's my maiden. Yeah. That's like, that's how, like, that's the, that's the trope and that's, that's the role. Like, he can still be a maiden, but yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, that's sort of like the yeah. naivety part that's kind of mm -hmm. nice about it, where it's like, she doesn't almost, she's like removed from the... She's Some a layer of bullshit taken away. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. It's good. Mine is The Night Country by Melissa Albert, and I wanted to read it, but I hadn't read the first one, which is called The Hazelwood, and so I had to read that one first so I could read this one. And I it. love it <laughs> okay, <good>. so <laughs> much. So I'm not going to tell you a lot about this one because I don't want to ruin mm -hmm. the story. So I'll tell you more about The Hazelwood to get you more interested in the series as a whole. It's about this girl, Alice, and she's been traveling with her mother, uh, trying to escape something they just have super bad luck and they don't know why and then her grandmother suddenly dies and She is this author of the super gritty dark collection of fairy tales and she dies on her estate the Hazelwood 
So after that happens, some creature from the hinterland, which is the world where the fairy tales are based, comes and kidnaps her mother. And her mother leaves a note that says, don't come to the Hazelwood. And of course, she, goes to she has Hazelwood. to go to the Hazelwood. And she enlists mm -hmm. the help of a fellow classmate, Ellery Finch, which mm -hmm. is a great name. That's a great name. Yes. Ellery. Yes, who is Love actually it. one of the super culty followers of this book of fairy tales. Uh, the mother and daughter relationship is a big focal point. She's just going on this quest to find her. And at one point, there's like a an understanding that she will do anything to find her. Like, lo like lose her life to find her kind of thing. Yeah. And that's how much her mom means to her. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Ellery Finch, though, is like, bitch will literally let everyone die around her <laughs> just to, to find, find her mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's very, like, my off yeah. another class. Yes. Okay. Which is good. so good. I loved it so much. <laughs> I did. Um, but apparently it's going to be a duology, which I was kind of sad about. Yeah. Not because the story doesn't... One. But that's it. Yeah, not that because the story doesn't conclude um, in a good way, or like I not because I feel like it's incomplete, but just because I loved it so much that yeah. I wish there would be more. Yeah. So, Alrighty. but holding out for that book of fairy tales in twenty twenty one. That was episode five of Spread, Spread the, the word. word. See you next month.